Brookline Community Church. I'm Catherine Merrill, the minister here. On the St. Patrick's Day, oh, you lovely leprechauns who are here. What a joy it is to gather together. Before I invite you to extend a greeting to those nearby, I want to remind you that not everyone loves shaking hands. So greet each other as, you, as they wish to be greeted. They're a sign of Christian fellowship. Let us welcome each other with the hand of Christ.
as part of crushing the rebellion in Israel. The temple had been destroyed or looted or defiled or shut down before, but it had a different feel this time, like maybe it was never going to come back, and indeed, it never did. As Judaism struggled with what to do next, it had to figure out how to worship the God of Israel without a temple, how to keep the liturgy of Yom Kippur without a high priest. It had to figure out what to do with all the splintering sects of Judaism, including that group who said that Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah. Now, none of those are familiar problems to us, except that they feel kind of familiar. We have to let go of the old, and we have to hold on to what was working. Next week is Palm Sunday, and then Holy Week, and then Easter. And we will tell all those ancient stories to hold on to what is working. But the idea of Jesus as a high priest, that's not something that ever really worked for us. We never set up a high priest. Even the Pope was not a high priest. When the letter to the Hebrews was written, the author was trying to save something from that image of the high priest. The letter itself references the temple liturgy for Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. The high priest in the temple was one who served as an intermediary between the people and God. And the high priest was the one that we sent into that most dangerous place of having direct contact with God. Now the letter argues that there are three aspects of being a high priest. He or she has to have a really good relationship with God. They have to know how to listen to God. And they have to get God to listen to them. He or she has to have a really full life. They have to know what it is like to be a real human being. And it can't be a person, this is number three, it can't be a person who has schemed to get into the role. They have to be chosen by God. Now, subsequently, Christianity has argued that everything that we see Jesus do, whether that is baptism or having a meal with their family or loving his neighbors, we share that same spark that Jesus had. So in that sense, we are all high priests. So what I'd like to do is break you into groups and ask you, how do we assess what aspects of being a high priest do we see in Jesus and in other human beings, including ourselves? I'll give each group uh, some questions to help guide their thinking, and there will be three groups. Good relationship with God, in touch with what it means to be fully human, and chosen by God. How do we figure those things out? That's what I'm going to ask you to do. So let's have good relationship with God up here, Let's have in touch with what it means to be fully human here and chosen by God somewhere in the middle and in the back over there. So go, break into your groups, and then I'll hand out the questions. Yeah, I know, keep doing it. I don't want to see the eyeballs. <laughs>
Oh my God. 